Good morning and welcome to this, our Palm Sunday service. You're very welcome to join with us in this act of worship from the United Reformed Churches at Morpeth, Widrington and Great Babington. We're going to begin our service by singing, Make Way, Make Way for Christ the King, as we welcome Jesus into our worship during this Palm Sunday. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we greet you today as the Word made flesh, before all, beyond all, within all. The one in whom all things have their being, yet entering into our world of space and time. Sharing our humanity, experiencing the joys and sorrows of flesh and blood living and dying among us, so that we might share in the joy of your kingdom. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. We greet you as Messiah, the son of David, king of Israel, servant of all, saviour of all, anointed for burial, crowned with thorns and lifted high on a cross. Your kingdom, not of this world. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. We greet you as Lord of the empty tomb, the risen Christ, victorious over death, triumphant over evil, the one who has gone before us, whose spirit walks with us now, and who will be there to greet us at our journey's end. Jesus Christ, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We greet you as King of kings and Lord of lords, the ascended and exalted Lamb of God, ruler of the ends of the earth, enthroned in splendour, worthy of all honour and glory and blessing. The King of glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord Jesus Christ, 
we greet you today with joyful worship and reverent praise. Hear our prayer and accept our homage, for we offer it in your name and to your glory. Amen. Reading from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good and his love is eternal. Let the people of Israel say, his love is eternal. Open to me the gates of the temple. I will go in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Only the righteous can come in. I praise you, Lord, because you heard me, because you have given me victory. The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. This was done by the Lord. What a wonderful sight it is. This is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. Save us, Lord. Save us. Give us success, O Lord. May God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. From the temple of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. With branches in your hands, start the festival and march around the altar. You are my God and I will give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. A reading from Luke 19, verses 28 to 40. After Jesus said this, he went on ahead of them to Jerusalem. As he came near Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you. As you go in, you will find a colt tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If someone asks you why you are untying it, tell him, the master needs it. They went on their way and found everything just as Jesus had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying it? The master needs it, they answered. And they took the colt to Jesus and they threw their cloaks over the animal and helped Jesus get on. And as he rode on, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near Jerusalem, at the place where the road went down to the Mount of Olives, the large crowd of his disciples began to thank God and praise him in loud voices for all the great things that they had seen. God bless the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God. Then some of the Pharisees in the crowd spoke to Jesus. Teacher, they said, command your disciples to be quiet. Jesus answered, I tell you that if they keep quiet, the stones themselves will start shouting. Look at me. Normally you don't notice me. You tread on me on your way to Jerusalem as you pick your way down the hilly path. You don't look at the ground as you descend the Mount of Olives. Instead, you see the Golden Gate. But I am here, even though you barely see me. I am here, and I know that you can feel me. Feel me. I am unique. There is no other stone like me. To you, perhaps, every stone is the same. But my colour, my smoothness, my rough edges are all my own. I am here, but you want to ignore me. All I do is make you uncomfortable. And you think of me as dead, unfeeling. But I see you. I see your dusty feet, calloused and hardened by the sun and the sand. I see the palms in your hands. 
I see your eyes bright with hope until you lay a cloak over me. And then all I can do is listen. I hear the shouts, the chatter, the build-up of excitement for this new Deliverer King. I hear the carping and complaining of those who would dampen your spirits. I feel the hardness of the donkey's hooves as our rescuer approaches. I hear his words of love for Jerusalem and see his tears of pain. And you think that I am silent. But I, whose birth is lost in the beginning of time, I, who will outlast you all, I am shouting too. In the Bible readings today, we see the crowd shouting. We think about all those who were watching Jesus's procession into that holy city and imagine the myriad of expectations and hopes and worries that were all tied up in his arrival there that day. We've even imagined the stones shouting. Usually the churches today would be filled with people. Palm Sunday has remained a significant Sunday on the church's calendar. This Sunday would be a day of celebration and singing praise before we turn our minds to the events of Holy Week. But today, the church is empty. There is a hush. Jesus says in that passage from Luke's Gospel, If my followers keep quiet, the stones themselves will cry out. And I wonder what the stones here today would say if they could speak. Gordon? Is that you? Yes, of course it's me. I was just talking about the stones and how Jesus said the stones of Jerusalem would shout out. Quite a few of them did, you know. Well, that's what we carvings believe. Did they wave palms as well? Don't be daft. They are stones. They haven't got any hands. The most we can do is wobble our moss back and forth. Anyway, like I said, we carvings we tell the stories of how the stones of the temple gave a great shout that morning. Only no one could hear it because everyone was singing and talking so loud. A bit like us when we used to meet on Sundays here in church. Did you used to hear us? Of course I heard you. You always woke me up. You were asleep? Well, I had a late night. I was out clubbing with my gargoyle friends. Oh, where do gargoyles go at night then? They go out on the tiles, of course. I wish I hadn't asked. Anyway, you haven't been making a lot of noise here lately. Well, we haven't been able to meet together in church, but we are looking to a time when we might be back again and then it will be a real celebration. And do you think you might make as much noise as the crowds waving their palms when Jesus entered Jerusalem? I don't know. Perhaps not. Maybe we're too reserved. Stiff upper lip and all that. Or maybe you're not thinking straight. Because you know every time two or three of you gather together in here, Jesus walks in through the front door, as it were. Imagine that. Every time you folk gather together for worship, he enters this place in triumph. I suppose you're right. And what does he get from you lot? Hardly a murmur. 
Sometimes you're so wrapped up in your own thoughts that you don't even notice he's around. Well, it's difficult. It's not like it was then. He's not riding a donkey through the streets. Maybe not, but he's still here. And isn't that something to get excited about? Now, if you will excuse me, I need to catch up on my beauty sleep. Yes, well, that's going to take quite a lot of sleep if you ask me. Gordon! Gordon! Oh, he's gone. There was a woman who spent some months serving God in Kenya and on her final visit to a remote township she attended a medical clinic and as the Maasai women there began to sing together she found herself deeply moved by their beautiful harmonies. She wanted always to remember this moment and to try to share it with friends when she arrived home and with tears flowing down her cheeks she turned to her friend and asked can you please tell me the translation of the words to this song? And her friend looked at her and solemnly and said, If you boil the water, you won't get dysentery. You know, we can easily misunderstand situations that we find ourselves in. On this Palm Sunday, we reflect on the joy of the trif triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's a time of celebration. And with all those people attending the Passover, we wave our palm branches and welcome this king who rides on a donkey. The disciples, along with the crowd, get caught up in these celebrations. They're waving their branches too, along with everyone else, proclaiming that Jesus is the king and the Messiah who will bring down the ruling authorities. But they miss the point. They misunderstand the situation they find themselves in. In the Gospels we're told many times that Jesus takes the twelve disciples aside and as they set off to, Jesus, to Jerusalem, Jesus specifically says to them, See, we are going to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. And then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him. 
and after three days he will rise again. But here, when they finally reach the gates of Jerusalem, all thoughts of death and crucifixion have fallen away and they get caught up in the worship and celebration of this new king who will overthrow the city. I'm sure they're thinking, well, we know what Jesus said, but he couldn't really mean that, could he? He was speaking metaphorically or figuratively. He can't possibly die without fulfilling what he set out to do. And we wonder how these disciples who have been told by Jesus so clearly about the events that will occur in Jerusalem, how can they just join in that celebration parade? We see time and time again the disciples' ongoing disbelief that what Jesus says about his death will come true. The disciples missed the reality of what Jesus was about to do. We will not be able again to have the public procession or outdoor services that we used to at Easter time. We will not be able to share the Good Friday events with the public who might witness what we do on the streets. Perhaps that is a good thing. Because there are some who say that the public only ever see us processing very solemnly on Good Friday, but they never get to see the joy of our celebration that goes on in the churches on Easter Sunday. But I also think the opposite is true. We are in danger of missing Good Friday altogether. Those who work or who are on the fringes of the church, even those who follow the lectionary readings from Sunday to Sunday, miss out on the events of Good Friday. We go from the celebration of the entry into Jerusalem this Sunday to the celebration of Easter Sunday morning next week. Many people miss out the Good Friday bit. Many people miss out on purpose because it's too hard to take because they don't like that bit of the story. This Palm Sunday, amid all our cries of Hosanna, Wherever we may be, we have to recognise that in just a few days, those cries will turn to cries of crucify him. No matter how much we or the disciples want to avoid it, the cross has to be faced. There are times when we are tempted to miss out those bits of the Bible that offend our own view of who God is. Like the stories of the Old Testament when the nations are being slaughtered by the Israelites who have God as their champion. But we also miss out the bits that unsettle our view of what it means to be Christian. We are in danger of avoiding the bits of the story we don't like. Always Hosanna and never crucify. We're quite happy to jump from Palm Sunday to Easter morning without passing a thought about the bit in between. But the reality is that our lives as Christians, that when we read the story of the Bible, it's not all joy and celebration. There are times of suffering and sadness too. Somebody once said, when we long for a life without difficulties, remind us that oaks grow strong in contrary winds and diamonds are made under pressure. Our Christian life cannot be a life without difficulty. If the Bible or church or our view of the Christian life is only about the good bits, then where do we turn when life gets tough? Easter for our family has always revolved around spring harvest, a, a large Christian event held at various places around the country. Rob Parsons at Spring Harvest one year, told a story of a man in Colorado Springs. A man who had devoted his life to God and was about to set off with his family to become a missionary. But one day, as they were getting into their car outside of church, one of his daughters turned round and saw a gunman walking across the parking lot. In the next instant, 
he heard a shot ring out and his daughter fall to the ground. He struggled to get out of the car to check if she was all right and he heard more shots and noticed that he himself had been hit. Lying on the floor of the car, he cried out to God, why is this happening to me? We were going to serve you and be missionaries. Why is this happening? And the father says that he heard a voice saying, we are not going around this. I am not taking this away. We are going through this. In that incident, he lost his daughter and was injured himself and spent weeks in hospital. But he knew those words were from God. We are going through this. We face many difficulties in life and sometimes we want God to take them away so that they are no longer there. Sometimes we ask God to bypass them for us so that they're still there but we can find a way around them. But sometimes God says to us, we are going right through the middle of this together. As Jesus kneels in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays to God, If it is your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. Sometimes our cup is overflowing with joy and blessing. Sometimes we have to drink from the cup of suffering. Jesus says, Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. And God says, I could take it away. We could find another way of doing this. But we are going through this. We cannot bypass Good Friday. And today, we cannot just skip from Palm Sunday to Easter morning. Easter means nothing unless we know that Jesus faced the cross and gone through death and came out on the other side. It is when we see ourselves in God's story, knowing that there are hard times and suffering for God's people, but God is with us in this and leads us through to the other side. That is when we can find strength and comfort in our times of suffering. At that last supper, on the night before he died, Jesus sat with his followers and closest friends. Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Let us pray together. Gentle Christ, you set your face to Jerusalem, the place of trial, of torture and death. Surrounded by noise, by expectation and hope, love unknown, vulnerability unrecognised. Gentle Christ, we will walk with you, we will weep with you, we will watch with you, our eyes on you, our hearts on you, our lives for you. in humility, in awe, in peace. Amen. 
And our final hymn is Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. Thank you for joining with us in this act of worship on Palm Sunday. During this week, we'll be putting a link to the URC podcast, which will be a daily podcast throughout Holy Week. And each morning we'll, we'll put the link on our Facebook sites so that you can then follow that link and listen to the daily podcast as we go through Easter week together. Check out our Facebook pages as well for details of our Maundy Thursday and Good Friday services. We, some will be in person, some will be online. Um, so do check out what is going on and where you might be able to join with us as we worship this Easter. I invite you to join with me in saying the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.